Good afternoon and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday, the 17th of August, 2020, and the time has just gone 12.12 for the summertime. And it's been a fairly quiet start to the European trading session. Um, even though uh, we, we've seen volatility is fairly low, but we, but we are seeing modest gains being shown across uh, European stock markets, even though there isn't a whole lot to be optimistic about. Uh, it's the same old stories. The coronavirus crisis is, is still very much at the forefront of traders' minds. Um, sadly, we're seeing some countries in Europe and Asia either reimpose strict, stricter, um, stricter um, restrictions or else at the very least express concerns about the, 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 their, their respective health crisis. Um, US-China relations continue to be, continue to be a bit frosty. Uh, the trade talks that were supposed to go ahead were cancelled. Um, this is kind of added to the kind of sour relationship between the two largest economies in the world. Um, on top of that, um, it, speaking of the US and politics, there is still no deal reached between the Republicans and the Democrats in relation uh, to ha having a stimulus package. So these are all the kind of major topics and themes of the week uh, of, of the session. Like I said, you know, but we are still pushing a small bit higher, uh, despite the fact that there isn't a whole lot to be cheery about. What I'll do is I'll start off by looking at the week ahead article, which can be found on our website, cmcmarkets.com, under insights, on, under insights, and you go to news and analysis. A number of companies are posting their figures tomorrow. We've uh, quoted numbers out from Walmart, Home Depot, Nvidia. We first have numbers from Persimmon, the home builder. On Wednesday, we have the Feds, uh, we have the minutes from the latest Fed meeting. On Thursday, we have the Closely watched US jobless claims. City World were supposed to report their numbers this week, but they pushed them back until late September. Um, we have a third quarter update from Deere & Co on Friday. Also on Friday, we have UK public finances. We'll see what the, what the borrowing of the British government uh, as, uh, has now arrived at. Uh, and we also have an update uh, from, the, from the UK in terms of retail sales. And lastly, uh, we have the, the, the flash PMI reports. Um, for France, Germany, and the UK. So that's going to give an indication of manufacturing and, uh, and service reports uh, from some of the largest economies in Europe. I'll start off by taking a look at the FTSE 100. It'll be, for those of you who tune in regularly, it'll be the, um, to these videos, it'll be the usual rundown. I'll cover a few of the big indices, I'll cover a, few, a couple of big currency pairs, and then I'll take a look at a couple of commodities. So the wider upward trend for the last few months remains intact. You know, we're talking that the lows from March uh, until now remains intact. But notice how in, in, in the last few weeks, the highs of July failed to take out the highs of June. The lows in July took out the lows um, in, in June. And then we, we had a rally uh, into the, to the middle of August, which the rally in August didn't really, you know, didn't, didn't retest the highs of July. So we seem to be a bit range bound and if anything, as long as you're below the 50-day moving average, this blue line here, it, it seems to be a slight bias to the downside. And should we remain below the 50-day moving average, we could see further losses from here. And should that be the case, we can head back down towards the psychologically important 6,000 mark. Uh, and if we go below that, we could be looking at retesting the lows of you know, the, the lows of late July into early August. And they come into play in around 5,852. And if you go below that, the kind of 5,800 will be the next big number to watch out for. But if you do manage to press on higher from here, and if you take out the, uh, the highs of August, we could be looking at retesting this zone here in around 3,440, 3,000, 3, sorry, apologies, 6,340, uh, this area here. Uh, uh, there, there are about actual resistance on a number of occasions in the past. Um, so it's likely to be a significant level if you get back up there again. That's what's going on on the FTSE. I'll take a look at what's going on over in Germany. So as you can see here on the DAX, solid upward trend for the last few months. Similar to, you know, what's a bit different between the, the DAX and the FTSE 100 is um, the lows of late, of late July didn't really actually take out the lows of June. So we're still in the kind of upward, upward trend, uh, even more so on the, on the DAX. Fair enough, the highs of August, I've yet to take out the highs of July, but we're still in that upward trend. We're comfortably above the, this blue line here, the 50-day moving average. And while we continue to hold above that, it's likely we could see the, the wider uptrend continue. 
if you press on higher from here, uh, we could be looking at targeting 13,000 as a big psychological number. Should we go beyond that, we, th we could then be looking at retesting the highs of July. And if we go beyond that, we could then be looking at heading back up to levels last seen in February. Uh, a move to the downside might find some support from this blue line here, the 50-day moving average, and that comes to the play just north of 12,600. And if we go below that, we could be heading back down towards the lows of early August in around there, thereabouts, 12,500. Uh, and if we have a, you know, quite a large move to the downside, we could even head back down towards the lows of late July. This blue, this red line here, the 200-day moving average acted, acted nicely as support back then. That comes into play. Uh, just north of 12,200. And if a metric has been important in the past, it makes it more likely it'll be important in the future, although there are no guarantees. Take a look now at what's going on uh, with, the US, with the Dow Jones. The Dow Jones is in pretty good shape. To be honest, it's been, been quite boring. If you, if you look at the, uh, the range the last few sessions, it's been fairly low, it's been pretty much range bound, but the wider upward trend of the last few months is still very much in play. If you press on higher from here, uh, we could be looking at retesting the highs of last week, and that's in, a, that's in around um, 28,155. Also keep an eye on this level here, um, 28,164, coming back from the lows uh, of, of late January. And of course, if you, take out, if you take out this level here, the highs of August, we could then be looking at targeting back up to levels last seen in late January, just as the kind of crisis was really taking hold uh, in the US. Uh, any moves to the downside on the, on, the, uh, on, on the Dow Jones could find some support in this zone here in around 27,633. Um, we have been quite, quite, you know, we have been in a short, in, in a tight range last few months, last few weeks rather. Uh, so if we do break below that, we could be heading back down towards this zone here, down around 27,000. As you can see, that acted as there, thereabouts, acted as support at the beginning of the month. And there are a few occasions in July when, well, just north of 27,000 acted as resistance. Turning our attention to the strongest index of the bunch, the S&P 500, which is not too far away from its all-time high, uh, which is incredible if you think about it, given what's going on with the US economy. But nonetheless, you know, even though there isn't a deal has not been struck between the US and the Democrats in relation to a stimulus package, some people believe, you know, some players have a view out there that some sort of an agreement will be reached at some point. Um, so the S&P 500 is, it continues to be in a strong upward trend. If you press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting the highs, the all-time highs that were posted in mid-February. And if we go beyond that, the next big kind of big number to look out for will be 3,400. Any uh, pullbacks could find some support uh, back down toward this zone here, down around 3,326. Uh, and if we go below that, uh, we could be looking at heading back down toward this area here in around, in, well, in around 3,300 itself. And then below that, down toward this zone here in around uh, 3,280. You know, buying on the dip has clearly been a popular strategy the last few months. So if we do see a pullback, that we, we could see some fresh buyers uh, enter the fold. That concludes the indices section. I'll start off now on the currency, starting off at euro dollar. So this is the euro dollar here. It's been in a nice upward trend uh, the, the last few weeks. It's been in a very positive trend recently. Uh, only in early, only a while ago, we were hit the euro dollar hit its highest level in over two years. So it's in a strong upward trend. We traded a bit side range bound the last few sessions, but we're still nonetheless in the upward trend. If we press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting the early, the early August highs uh, in around here, just you know, which comes into play north of 119, in around 119.16, there thereabouts. And if we go beyond that, you know, the kind of psychology important one spot 20 will be the next level to keep an eye out on. Any move to the downside could find support in around the, the recent lows. Uh, the, the, kind of the, the lowest low of August has been in, in around one spot, 16 spot 96, this area here. But we can see just north of that metric, uh, there's a few occasions that that, that area, act, well, well above the, that mark, acted as support. Uh, if we go below that, down towards one spot 16, could act as support as well. And it's only really, if you have a fairly large pullback, could we head potentially head back towards this blue line here, the 50-day moving average. That's quite a way away. Notice how it acted nicely as support um, back in May. Um, so 
if you have a decent size support, we, decent size pullback, we could be heading back down towards that le level. Uh, the pound is also in pretty good shape given the weakness in the US dollar. So we can see here, it wasn't that long ago, the pound was at its highest level since uh, early, early March. So multi-month highs have been achieved not too long ago. Even though we've kind of had a pullback, I mean, we kind of, um, we've kind of rebounded it from the pullback, we're still very much in the kind of the wider upward trend of the last few months. So if you press on higher from here, um, we first we could be looking at retesting the highs of early August. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at heading towards the kind of 132. And if we go beyond 132, uh, we could be looking at targeting this metric here, one spot 32.84, the highs of late December. Any moves, uh, any pullbacks in the uh, the pound versus US dollar might find support from this zone here in around 130. It's kind of a big number. We're currently at one spot 30, 78, 79. If you, and, and, and of course, if you manage to have a decent move below 130, we could be looking at heading back all the way down towards kind of 128. Bit of consolidation from the 128 area there. It also acted as resistance, um, well, just north of the resistance in early June. And if we go below that, we could be looking heading towards this this area here, where the red line, the 200 moving average, kind of runs into uh, runs into the 50 day moving average. So, a couple of important metrics converging on each other, and that comes into play one at one spot 27.12. Take a look now. What's going on on the gold market? Gold has obviously seen a lot of volatility recently. Uh, at the beginning of the month. It hit an all-time high, had a major pullback, a uh, major move to the downside last week, but note the, the long wick on this candle here on Wednesday the 12th denotes indecision of what do you know. The market has been re recovering somewhat since then. It's, it's only clawed back a portion of the ground at last, but nonetheless, um, while we can hold above the 1900 mark, it's likely we could see the wider upper trend continue. Should that be the case, 2000 is, an SP, is a kind of the big psychological number, and if we go beyond 2000, we can then be looking at retesting the high, the recent highs, uh, which are posted earlier this month. Um, if we do have a move to the downside, if we go below 1900, this this every you know some traders will be keeping an eye on for this area in at once sorry at 1863, the recent lows here um, from only from last week, and if we go below that, we could be looking at heading down towards just below it, the 50-day moving average, this blue line here in at one spot, sorry, 18.44. Notice how it acted nicely as support um, back in the middle of middle of June. Like I said before, if a metric has been important in the past, it makes it more likely it'll be of importance in the future, although there are no guarantees. And lastly, I'll take a look at Brent crude oil, the October contract. To be honest, it's been fairly boring in the oil market recently. Um, it's tied in with the kind of perception about the global economy. It's, it's a good, good barometer for how you know economies are reopening. So we're, you know, there's, there's, there's potential for increased demand. Um, but on the flip side, you know, if, if economies are going to be reclosing, that could curb potential demand. So the last few sessions, it's been fairly range bound, but the wider upward trend is still very much in play. If we do press on higher from here, we could be looking heading up towards 46 bucks or just north of that, that the recent highs. Uh, in a 46 by 23, and if we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting the lows of early March in at one sp a 46 spot 67. Any move to the downside, we could find support from this zone here in around 44 spot 24, and a move below that could take us back down towards this blue line here, the 50 50 day moving average, which comes into play at pretty much just right on 43 bucks. Uh, that's all from this week. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, stay safe and have a good trading week.